on behalf of uh, honeycomb creative support and photostop i uh, want to welcome ladies and gentlemen to reels of wonders now a lot of people have asked i'm sure those who have attended every day have have heard me uh, mention this uh, over last six days but for all those who haven't uh, attended uh, any of them before i just want to mention for for the benefit of them that reels of wonders because a lot of us uh, have started photography journey when it used to be analog cameras camera reels uh, and transparent sheets and all that stuff that we used to use and today we have graduated into the technology era so we thought why not call this as uh, reels of wonders which is our international photography week theme 2020 my name is mithun prabhu and i handle pr and marketing for photostop which is a printing brand of honeycomb creative support which is uh, office uh, which has offices uh, in india in bangalore hyderabad and mumbai i am an it professional by work and but a passionate travel photographer by heart photography is in my dna and i love what i click and all those who follow me on instagram my handle is uh, at the rate uh, mithun prabhu without any space m i t h u n p r a b h u would definitely uh, agree to that statement we are celebrating international photography week 2020 this whole week with seven different genres of photography seven eminent photographers and seven full days of the week which is culminating today uh, that is august 22nd we had a wide variety of topics in fact like i have always mentioned we started in the wild went to the land then traveled to the sea then participated into salons took a flight into stars and cosmos went into the tiny world of macro yesterday and today for the grand finale we tra travel along with deepak into the you know around the world with his travel photography pictures all the eminent speakers as, as you would have seen had taken utmost care to curate the photographs themselves they are going to share their unique experiences which you have already seen but deepak is uh, specifically going to add uh, more of his uh, travel experiences and uh, storytelling value to it show uh, breathtaking photographs and share tips with all of us that not only takes us through an enjoyable journey but into the wonderful world of photography that's the passion that we all share so welcome all and let's get rolling into the reels of wonders that like i can mention the theme for international photography week 2020 which we also call as ipw 2020 today again i want to repeat uh, you know it will definitely take two hours of time so please uh, you know be enough hydrated coffee tea anything that you want to refresh uh, please do be around because deepak is definitely going to take you travel around the world who has a wide amount of uh, wide varying experiences and is an excellent uh, travel storyteller so before we get in let's do uh, poll quickly we want to do two polls like i mentioned so vinay if you can just uh, put in the poll onto the screen so you will get uh, the first poll right now please do select uh, your options and that's uh, coming light uh, right onto your screen deepak oh sorry vinay okay so here we go uh, please uh, use your options and select uh, the question is how many webinars have you attended in the international photography week webinar series including today's please remember including today's which is today's the seventh session wow. so you know so yeah it, it's definitely wow it does just uh deepak wow. looks like it was as of uh, as of uh, yesterday wow. right? so uh, the answers are one two three four five six and seven so please do select i'm seeing uh, an interesting trend uh, deepak already so uh 30 20 more seconds before we close the poll yes indeed nearly uh, 80 percent have already voted the remaining 20 percent please do exercise we have 10 more seconds okay five four three close two one let me close okay Okay, I just want to share the results. Uh, so, Nofil, as you see, and Deepak, uh, you as well, we have nearly 35% who have stayed with us all seven days, which is wonderful. So, I just want to give a clap for all of you, you know, who Thank have joined us all seven days. And all uh, some of you who missed probably, you know, two, three, four sessions, do not worry. Uh, you know, <coughs> all the links will be available on the Honeycomb YouTube channel for you to uh, go and see. And those who attended will definitely get uh, it as a link uh, in the email. Okay, so that's uh, that's great. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, 
and uh, can we when i have the second poll please let's quickly do that as well so there will be a second poll yeah so this is more for deepak to know how many of you in the attendees are travel photographers or have tried travel photography before it's perfectly fine if you have not tried before or you want to learn more do not be having that inhibition that how do i mark no please do mark in i know there are a lot of people are still joining in welcome everyone who have joined in last couple of minutes there is a poll that is happening right now please keep typing i already see 72% voted and as, as expected the trend is uh, very interesting deepak as you see yes very yes okay 20 more seconds before we close come on guys it's just 81% 82% yes uh, i think uh, we need uh, everybody to mark in so that deepak knows okay five more seconds four three two one let me just close okay and i'll just quickly share it for you okay so deepak as you see uh, you know uh, amateurs down to want to need to want to learn more i think is uh, roughly around 65% roughly 64% and uh, we have 6% of them experts wonderful so welcome all those uh, 13 people who have marked them as experts uh, we would definitely want to hear uh, you know if you have anything to share with our you can always use the chat uh, in case if you have more information to share please okay so that's wonderful so deepak i hope uh, you have now full throttle to know how to start right okay okay i think uh, you can hear me and you can see the screen right yes uh, before that uh, uh let me just uh, mention this you know i just wanted to mention a uh, couple of things one is uh, i know that uh, traveling tends to magnify human emotions and i'm sure most of you agree with this uh, statement and absolutely there is no barrier in terms of age when it comes to travel so any one of you who feel i'm too young or too old to travel there's there's nothing of that sort we should travel and i'm i'm sure uh, you know uh, we we all agree uh, with this so with this uh, uh, you know we i wanted to introduce uh, deepak samani who is a travel photographer himself to talk about his love for travel and photography he is one of our accomplished international photographer who is at who is indian at heart and humor i normally say is a second name deepak samani lives in leicester in uk he is a photographer by passion and has been photographing for past few decades his interest include travel with emphasis on people and street photography he as he tapers uh, his professional life he wishes to visit india more often and increase his life experiences presently he shoots with fuji x system one thing i want to mention specifically about deepak is that i have personally traveled multiple times with him in the past few years right from northeast down to south of india the way he built relationships with unknown subjects especially on the street we all should learn that art from him and and i i can vouch uh, that uh, statement to my to the bottom of my heart because that's how he manages to get some fantastic uh, street uh, photographs i hope all of you have a wonderful and an unforgettable learning experience with deepak but before i hand it over to you deepak i just want to uh, also mention few things uh, if you're okay sure go ahead right i want to i want the entire honeycomb team that is right now listening to me uh, to switch on their videos and show themselves on the screen and i will tell you a reason you know because i want uh, you know all folks all attendees who are there on this uh, on this webinar to give a round of applause for the entire team and the management of honeycomb who made this happen the the pleasure that you had of joining us honestly it was put at very very short notice strategic planning to execution to implementation on ground with creatives videos content social media campaigning to communication it was more or less just these folks on the screen so the people that you see on the screen right now you know all all uh, deepak will have to stop stop uh, share uh, stop the share sure 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 right so as we see th this is uh, the set of people starting from vinay Shri Kumar, Nopal, Mahashweta, Georgie, Sanisha, Akhil, and Harish. So this is uh, the team. I just wanted 
you to give them a round of applause because you know each one has put in so much effort all that uh, you learned over last 7 days you know excluding of course the speakers having their content so all this was uh, you know was, was because of uh, this team that is on the screen thank you very much guys uh, you know you rock thank you mithun can i just add to that if i may please yeah yeah of course uh, you should yeah these guys have had to put up with a lot of nonsense from me as well so i really appreciate <laughs> it no no i don't think so but then yeah you're <laughs> like i said uh, deepak has humor as a second name <laughs> okay thank you guys uh, yeah over thank to you deepak thank you thank you okay thank you thank you we can see your screen deepak okay everything everybody can see me and everybody can hear me mithun can you confirm yes so uh, we can see you and we can hear you yes okay so let me start uh, by uh, wishing everybody a very happy ganesh chaturthi on this uh, auspicious day today i am very fortunate to be presenting uh, to everybody on this uh, day and uh, i'd like to start by saying ganpati bappa moria and uh, and as we say the word moria moria is uh, synonymous with ganpati bappa we don't say moria in isolation uh, we say it in the same breath as uh, when we say ganpati bappa moria so for me photography is uh, synonymous with travel uh, from uh, time immemorial i would say uh, if you go back to the very earliest cavemen whether you look at the caves in france or in south america when people have been there they have left their imprints they have left their marks and uh, i think it's in the human dna to either leave a sign behind or bring something back with them um, in this era we are very blessed today that uh, we can uh, bring back photographs with us uh, since the evolution which uh, Uh, Satish talked about uh, a couple of days ago, and uh, so what I'd like to do is uh, start uh, with your well wishes. And uh, what I have done is uh, uh, curated a few images of mine, and uh, all I have done is captured the moment. It either happened, I either made it happen, or I saw it and uh, observed it. So. Uh, thank you very much honeycomb for giving me this opportunity today so here we go on the journey so as i said uh, it happened and so i made i made some photographs to share with you uh, so what do we do an essential part of uh, photography is getting to the destination and walking and uh, the first photograph here i share with you is a uh, old decrepit shoe in uh, i so on one of my walks in the peak district which is uh, not far from where i live and uh, i thought okay uh, we must uh, leave our footsteps behind and nothing else but in this case uh, the owner of the house has put an old shoe to good use and uh, i thought it was quite charming so i photographed it uh, this is a view of the area that i walked in it's a place called the derbyshire dales and uh, it's about uh, 40 miles about 60 kilometers from where i am it's a very beautiful area of uh, outstanding natural beauty and uh, a fun place to walk and uh, there is nothing like britain in the summer uh, i'm going to start by saying that it's a beautiful place to be in uh, this was taken around april time so you can see uh, the trees are still there uh, you can see some very old stone wall cottages uh, which uh, some of them are now not in use but you see them all over the place in the peak district and peak district is very famous for its uh, stone walls and uh, i quite uh, like this image so i thought i'll share it with you and uh, so this is uh, home this is uh, near home for me and i'm now going to take you to a place called lincoln lincoln again is about 
50 to 55 miles northeast of where I live. Uh, Lincoln is known for its uh, really magnificent uh, cathedral with some amazing arches and uh, really breathtaking architecture. Uh, in fact, Lincoln was built in two stages. Uh, feel free to go to Lincoln Cathedral's website and uh, have a look at it a little bit more. I just uh, wanted to share this and uh, show you the play of light uh, in black and white. So once I was there, I observed, I observed this scenario and uh, this light was uh, playing uh, from the stained glass windows. You can see in the previous image here from the stained glass windows here, the light was falling in and I made a mental note of it and said, okay, this looks rather interesting. So how are we going to uh, make something of this light? And uh, I waited and waited until the setting sun uh, on, 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 on the western side here was aligned and casting the shadows from the stained glass windows onto these pillars. And uh, I'm actually quite pleased with the outcome from this shot. So what I'd like to say is when you go somewhere, observe light, uh, see what the potential is, see if you are going to be able to make uh, an image out of it uh, at some point. I could have just taken a picture uh, with, uh, with the light half on, on, on these pillars and walked away and been perfectly happy. But um, observe a little bit more, be patient, um, wait for things to happen. And uh, it surely will happen uh, if, 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 if you take a little bit of time uh, to, uh, to review it. And uh, this uh, image was featured on uh, Leicester Cathedral, on, on Lincoln Cathedral's website and uh, their Facebook page and uh, had a few good reviews. So sometimes it pays to just hold back a little bit in the place you are visiting and see what's going to happen next because uh, the drama is always being created and it's always changing. So Lincoln is also very famous for something called a steampunk festival. And uh, to the best of my knowledge, it holds uh, the largest steampunk festival in Europe. So you get uh, perfectly ordinary people dressed in these uh, attires. Uh, they, are, they are very, very bizarre and very trendy, as you can, as you can see from this snapshot here. And uh, it's a fantastic day out uh, to take uh, time out, go there and uh, engage with people. And uh, these people are very happy to be photographed uh, that's what they are there for. They are here, there to have a good time, meet the community, the steampunk community at large, and uh, be photographed. And we were blessed on the day with the fantastic weather too. So I thought I'll share something that Lincoln has to offer. So you can see the cobbled um, streets. This is the old part of Lincoln near the cathedral and the uh, old city walls. And uh, on the extreme right-hand corner, you can see we still have a few red telephone boxes. So just a little bit of observation, guys. When I say guys, uh, I mean both genders. I'm not uh, being gender biased here at all. So, okay, so whilst we were there, uh, there were probably, I don't know, on the day, a couple of thousand people. And I saw this uh, fine young lady and uh, I just approached her and uh, she was with her partner and I said, look, uh, I love your attire. I'd like to photograph you. And uh, so I said, so she's leaning on what are the city walls, the old city walls of uh, Lincoln. And uh, I, I got her to uh, sort of place herself in this, uh, in, 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 in this position. And as soon as I'd got her there, hordes of photographers uh, crowded because they saw a ready-made scene. So I, I let them do what they wanted. I waited again uh, very patiently and uh, said, okay, uh, now can you engage with me? And uh, you can see uh, her beautiful eyes, they are looking right on me. So as Mithun said earlier, I think uh, we need 
to approach people with a very big smile and with uh, very good intentions. And you will find that most of the time, people will engage very happily with you, uh, provided your intentions are good and uh, you are willing to share the photographs with, uh, with the subjects. So uh, I, I, here's uh, another image of uh, the same young lady. You can see she's uh, very cooperative and uh, very happy to share the time with me. And uh, basically she was happy. Uh, I was very happy uh, to have uh, find, found a, a subject that uh, I wanted to photograph. So you can see the human interaction, you can see the old city walls, and uh, you can see uh, the, the posing she did for me. So again, at the same place, uh, um, there were lots and lots of people, but uh, this lady here uh, rem reminded me of a, of a television uh, actress uh, from the old days in the UK called Lorraine Chase, and she has a face very similar to her. So again, this is a candid shot. I just observed her, and as uh, she exhaled, uh, I said, okay, time to press the, 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 the trigger button. So wait, wait for the moment, make it uh, a bit interesting, and a little bit of action in a photograph does not go amiss to make it uh, a little bit more uh, uh, imaginative and a little bit more engaging for your uh, uh, viewers to see. Uh, I like this image in black and white. Uh, it shows uh, the beautiful tonality and uh, the, especially her exhaling. So now I'm going to take you from uh, my home, my present home country to Ladakh. So this was uh, in winter last year in Puga Valley, uh, the temperature around here was about minus 25, minus 26. And with wind chill, it felt bitterly cold. It actually was uh, snowing at the time. And uh, we'd had about a couple of hours in the afternoon, uh, solid frozen. And then uh, this guy walks in, this uh, uh, herdsman, walks in with his uh, flock of uh, Pashmina goats and uh, it, it made for a perfect scene with his uh, red jacket, with the mountains in the background. And what you see is uh, there is no clarity because it was snowing quite he he heavily. I mean, as far as the envir environment is concerned, you can see this uh, uh, yak horn here. So this is a very unforgiving unforgiving uh, terrain and uh, uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful place to photograph if you are prepared to uh, be in the cold. And uh, here are a couple of uh, residents of the area. So these, uh, this is in the Puga Valley. Uh, so these two, they are over 75 years old and I was just uh, talking to them and you can see the, the, the lady, she's barely got her eyes open uh, because it was very, very cold. And I was just talking to them and saying uh, hello to them. By the way, I love dogs and they're a very, very beautiful little uh, mastiff puppy. And he was absolutely gorgeous. And uh, I take that away from uh, this image as well. Uh, so when... Uh, when I finished with them, I turned around about five minutes later and the, this gentleman, he'd walked to go and fetch his uh, herd of yaks and he'd probably walked a mile. Remember, this is at an altitude of about 4,600 meters, 16,000 feet. And he was walking as if, uh, you know, we would be walking on in the high street in our town at uh, ground level with absolutely no effort. When we tried to do that, we were absolutely out of breath. Uh, I think these guys are very, very special and uh, they have uh, fantastic features uh, to photograph as well. Uh, this was the following morning and uh, you can see uh, the dog here. He's a mastiff as well, beautiful dog. And uh, these sheep are, they're, uh, they're all 
were being taken out uh, to some of the pastures up in the mountains uh, by, 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 by the herdsmen. And uh, the, 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 the young men and the, the boys uh, and, and, and the men, they go away and the ladies, uh, they stay back and they tend to the, to, to the, to the flock that is behind uh, the, the little uh, baby girls, etc. Again, it's bitterly cold. This was early morning, and uh, you can see uh, the cold on the face, can't you? You can see how burnt the skin is and how bitterly cold it is. But there the baby is uh, curious uh, and making good eye contact with me, and uh, uh, I, I thought I'll share this with you. So this was in Ladakh, and this was again a shot in Ladakh in uh, September last year during a, a, a trip that I did with uh, uh, some guys from Bangalore uh, under the banner of Darter and uh, had a wonderful time. So this is uh, one of the places we camped and uh, I, I like the way the, uh, you, you can see everything, you can see the sun, you can see the, in, in the mountains. So here you've got the Noon and the Kun peaks the, the, the two of the largest peaks in the area and uh, the, the sun was setting from the right hand side and casting the shadows over the mountains. So I thought uh, it made, uh, made for an interesting image. And, uh, so this is uh, one of my uh, favorite landscape shots. I'm, I'm, I'm more of a people, people person, uh, not, not uh, too much into landscapes but here's one of my shots. Okay now we head over to uh, Assam and uh, this is uh, waiting for the ferry to go to the island of Majuli, the river island of Majuli. Uh, the sun was setting beautifully, it was uh, we transition from the blue to the golden hour and uh, uh, just waiting to get on the ferry and I thought uh, this made a nice uh, photograph. I posted this on uh, Insta and Facebook and uh, with a caption waiting for the ferry man. So this was uh, on the way to Majuli. Okay, so we went to quite a few interesting places in Majuli. Uh, there are several satras which uh, basically promote uh, the various uh, art forms, uh, whether they are written, whether they are dance, music, etc. And this is at a place I believe called Kamalabari Satra. So we were there having a wonderful time and uh, in the distance I heard uh, some music and uh, I thought this is strange, where is this coming from? Because we just uh, had a lovely uh, a performance uh, for ourselves and I said, where is this? And I just got curious and wandered off uh, uh, and left, left uh, the rest of the team behind. And I said, okay, wh wh where are we here? And uh, I basically thought, okay, uh, I can hear something. And then uh, as I honed into where the, the music was coming from, the door was just slightly ajar in this, uh, big uh, auditorium that uh, these ladies were practicing in and I just managed to uh, put my lens through this door and uh, ended up with this image. So watch out, hear out, look out. There are other opportunities as well when you uh, go and uh, visit places and uh, I would always suggest that um, do it with respect and do so that you're not disturbing these people. And uh, please, uh, as a guest, uh, uh, try and uh, minimize any impact uh, that your presence may have on these people. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know, these people are oblivious to the fact that I have photographed and uh, this uh, takes uh, a pride of place in my lounge, this image does. Uh, I really like it very much. So, okay, and then uh, in the same place, you have uh, young and old uh, residents and uh, these, this young man, he is obviously up to some mischief. And you can see that uh, 
he's uh, got his eyes on uh, someone. At this point in time, we don't know what's going on. Uh, there is an element of mystery. He's just sat there, but uh, he's clearly looking at someone. So this is uh, what he was doing. He was uh, waiting for his friend, whom I've just caught in the frame on the right hand side, as you can see. And as he comes in, he takes his wet towel off his head and he's obviously uh, doing what uh, most boys, uh, young boys do. So it's uh, not all about just uh, learning and uh, music and drama, but um, these guys do have uh, quite a lot of fun too in uh, what they do. And uh, they're just like any young boys. And uh, I just wanted to share uh, uh, daily life with you. So now I'm going to bring you back home. This is actually home for me. This is where I live. This is Leicester. So what you see here is a photograph of a, of a place called the Bradgate Park. And uh, it's, a, it's, a little, it's a country park with, a, this is the highest point, stands at an elevation of about a thousand feet, which is uh, not too, too high, but uh, we go here to see magnificent sunsets and uh, when we want to look at eclipses or uh, when we want to look at meteors, this is the place to head out to. So we have a lot of fun when we go to. So I wanted to welcome you with a beautiful sunset shot here of uh, uh, Bradgate Park. What you see on the left hand side is uh, a tower. It's affectionately called as Old John and uh, Again, um, if you want to know more about this, then uh, uh, please visit uh, bradgatepark.co.uk. So this is the high street in the town I live in. Now, I just wanted to show you, uh, share with you what the place looks like. Just a few, few, if you want to show a place, do try and show a marker. I've said here it is, Leicester, there's a map. So for me, this is an interesting, interesting composition. Uh, and uh, I, I really wanted to focus on the Leicester bit there. And uh, hopefully when you look at this image, you can tell, yes, it's a street scene. It's a street scene of a city and uh, it becomes obvious that it's Leicester. So for those uh, aspiring guys, uh, try and add a bit of subject. You could, I could have taken this photograph uh, face on looking at people, but then that would have uh, deviated from my message of trying to show the location of the place. And uh, so here again, this is very much Leicester and uh, this is a very nice public uh, house, a pub uh, called The Globe, again built in 1720. And this was a scene at Christmas time a couple of years ago where uh, you had the, the, the choir from the University of Leicester uh, who are doing a little bit of fundraising for one of the local charities. Now I could have just uh, taken an image here, taken a picture of uh, the choir singing with that background, but I did want to show a little bit of uh, action uh, in, in the image to say, you know, bring a bit of life to the image. So I waited until I got uh, this uh, lady donating uh, generously uh, in, in, into the ch charity box. Uh, and uh, so this is a very beautiful place and uh, I, I do like visiting it. Uh, at, at, at present, we are all uh, a bit constrained uh, due to the situation. Okay, so it's not uh, all roses, as you can see. Uh, here's a guy, he lives on the streets but uh, uh, he was sharing his food with his dog and uh, I have a love of uh, dogs and uh, he's, he's actually a very gentle dog. Uh, when I go into the city, if he's there, I'll always go and have a little play with him and say hello to this uh, uh, guy who's on the streets. So I just, just wanted to show you the reality of life. There is nothing harsh about it. I'm not trying to be critical, it is just what it is. Uh, and I just wanted to share uh, uh, my uh, observations with you. Okay, so we were sitting uh, after a festival in a bar and uh, this couple, they were just, uh, 
amazing. There was this intensity about them and they were just engaging with each other, very oblivious to the rest uh, of what was going on. And obviously I was sat uh, on a table opposite uh, some uh, uh, 15 feet away. So I got myself ready. Thankfully nowadays you can just focus lock uh, using your back button autofocus and I got them ready. And as soon as I saw this composition, uh, I pressed the trigger and I had two or three shots. And uh, this is my favorite. You can see the intensity in his eyes. He's engaged with her, but he's looking away. And uh, you can see the play of light uh, on her and uh, look at the tattoo on her back. Uh, I thought it made for an interesting shot. So I'm sharing it with you. Okay, so now uh, from Leicester, I take you to uh, Kumar Gali in Delhi. So here we have the matriarch of a family and uh, the man you see at the back, he is one of her three sons. So she lost her husband and uh, she runs this uh, family business uh, and uh, we, we started talking to her. I was with a very good friend of mine, Sarah. Sarah, if you are there, uh, Sarah lives in Delhi. And if uh, you are there, Sarah, hello from me. And this was, uh, again, last year uh, during one of my visits. So we, we just went there and she made an amazing subject with uh, surrounded by all these pottery items. So I got a bit curious, I said, okay, so, how does this whole thing work? Where is your kiln? Where is the bhatti? How do you fire all this? And uh, after a while, uh, she said, if you want to see, uh, then my granddaughter will uh, take you to the terrace and uh, you can have a look. So we were delighted uh, to get this opportunity. And here's Asha. And uh, we were heading up up the stairs, the second flight of stairs, which is here. And uh, as she walked up, I saw this uh, huge uh, sort of light, uh, almost a high key set up, just presenting itself. So I just told her, wait, 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 Asha, you know, please, please, uh, you need to do this for me. And uh, uh, she, she, she thought it was rather strange that uh, Here's a guy wanting to photograph me in this way. And uh, this is uh, one of my favorite people shots of all time. And uh, I've, uh, again, I like monochromes, I like black and white. So I've converted it. Uh, okay, so time's uh, marching on. So I'll just uh, move on a little bit now. Okay, and uh, we did get to see the kiln, the bhakti. Uh, as, uh, and I've got uh, some shots, but here you can see this has been fired the night before and uh, it's been cooled down. And uh, for me, this is a good uh, documentary uh, shot of my visit. And uh, again, makes, makes for an interesting shot. Okay, as uh, we were walking around, uh, I saw this uh, uh, fine young lady was uh, lighting up and I just could not resist it. Uh, uh, I said, you know, I do want to photograph you. And in the distance I could see that there was uh, somebody uh, stood, stood behind. And then I started talking to this, uh, this lady and I said, uh, who, 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 who's that? And she said, oh, that's my daughter. So I asked them to again pose for me. And uh, here she is. Uh, uh, duly obliging uh, to my whims and uh, doing this, uh, I, uh, I did. Uh, I did have to uh, cajole her into giving me this shot, but I uh, hope you like it. So uh, it's not all about mud and water and kilns and stuff. This is again taken in Kumar uh, Gully in in in, in Delhi and. Uh, Look at the way this uh, lady is uh, dressed. She's got her best attire on. She's all made up. And uh, at this point in time, I only had uh, with me an 1835 and a 12 millimeter on my second body. And this uh, 
I just wanted to take it from this perspective with my uh, 12 millimeter and uh, uh, she's uh, making good eye contact and uh, it again uh, there was a lot of uh, conversation that went on uh, before I managed to get this shot as, as Mithun said uh, I don't give up easily when it comes to photographing people and uh, I love engaging with people and uh, uh, photography is one part of it, but uh, talking to people and engaging with them is really the fun part. Okay, so now I bring you from one capital city to the next. So you will have seen all the cliche shots of uh, London with uh, Big Ben, uh, uh, Westminster, and uh, everything else that it has to offer. So here, um, we were stood at uh, Westminster Bridge and uh, it was a very, very bleak, uh, cold uh, day, cold evening. This was around 7.30 in the evening, uh, February, cold evening. And uh, this, uh, there was clearly a lot of traffic and we were waiting to cross the road and this, this, this frame presented itself. So you've got the iconic London bus, it's a shepherd's bush as it's uh, legible. And there in the frame, I had London Eye as well. And uh, for me, this represents uh, a, 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 a more interesting uh, view of London than a, than a cliche uh, shot of uh, London in uh, uh, Big Ben or the London Eye would. And uh, I thought I'll just uh, share it with you. Okay, so every time uh, when I go to a city which has history to it, I try and photograph uh, some old and new architecture uh, together. And uh, here we have uh, one of the newest buildings on the right hand side, the Shard in London. And uh, people tend to visit uh, uh, St. Paul's Cathedral on the north side of the river in London, but uh, let me suggest to you the next time you are in London, please, please, please uh, do visit London and go to Southwark Cathedral, which is uh, on the south side of the river. And uh, this is taken uh, from the courtyard of the cathedral. It's a magnificent cathedral. And I would say, please, please visit. Uh, do we have a do we have a poll on the screen for some reason, Mithun? No. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll carry on. So, yeah, I, I, like, to, I like to just uh, present the old and the new and uh, try and bring a little bit of interest in the picture. You've got uh, the, 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 the spire of the cathedral and the shard. They are both uh, converging. Uh, looking upwards into the sky and uh, it made for an interesting shot and uh, hope you like it too. Okay, uh, so London uh, holds uh, a very, very large uh, Pride Festival. Uh, the, the Pride Festival, for those uh, who don't know, is uh, about uh, the, the, the gay movement uh, and uh, you get uh, some fantastic subjects to photograph. And uh, here we are, I was stood uh, in, in, in the crowd, you know, 10, 12 deep, and I, I saw this guy manage to find a position to photograph uh, the very interesting tattoos he has on his back. And uh, uh, again, an, an, another people shot, I, I do focus on people. Okay, and here are uh, two lovely ladies. Uh, they'd obviously found a, a much better vantage point to uh, view uh, what was going on. And uh, I just said, uh, uh, you know, my lovelies, will you just uh, give me a big smile and uh, allow me to photograph you? And uh, here's the result. Uh, they were pleased uh, and uh, made me very happy too. So now I'm going to take you to Santorini. Uh, a few of you will have seen uh, these shots uh, probably on uh, Facebook and Insta. Uh, 
this is obviously one of the Greek islands uh, that uh, people see in the Mediterranean. And uh, it's uh, interesting in the daytime. However, uh, I wanted to wait uh, until uh, uh, the evening when uh, there was a little bit more interest and uh, there were a few more lights uh, to give uh, to give the place a little bit more uh, atmosphere. Uh, this is obviously a volcanic island, as you can see in the distance, you can see the mountains, it's all black. Even the beaches here are black, the sand is black, and the beaches are on the other side of the island. Uh, but it's a very beautiful rugged island and uh, well worth visiting at some point. So this is Santorini, this is the capital of Santorini called Fira, F-I-R-A. Uh, this is uh, another uh, place in Santorini, which is uh, very visited and uh, you can see uh, quite breathtaking views of, uh, of the Mediterranean from here. You get uh, these very beautiful uh, uh, places. These are all uh, accessible if you rent the houses out and so on. And this is uh, uh, a, a favorite with both tourists and uh, honeymooners, uh, this, uh, this particular place. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's OI, O-O-I is how it's written. Now, as, as I say, this place is very popular with uh, honeymooners, especially Orientals. They absolutely love visiting here. And I saw probably half a dozen couples in the couple of hours I was there. and. Uh, they will dress up in, in, in their wedding gear and they will come in their white dresses. Uh, it's a very elaborate affair. The, 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 the brides and the grooms, they love being photographed here. So I bumped into this couple and uh, they did not have a photographer with them. So the, the guy was busy photographing uh, his uh, very charming wife. And I said, look, let me take over. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take a few shots for you. And as a reward, I said at the end, do you mind if I take a picture of your, uh, of, 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 uh, of your fine lady? And uh, this is what I ended up. And uh, this is a memory for me of, uh, of, of what the place is all about. And uh, this is a view at uh, sunset. Uh, that was a cruise. So we were on a cruise and the cruise was uh, obviously the cruise was at sea and uh, I've taken a picture from uh, Santorini itself as the sun was setting and we were heading back uh, with, with the shallow waters. Uh, the cruise itself had to be uh, positioned uh, quite, quite further away. Uh, th th there, is no, there is no port which will facilitate such a large ship there. But uh, again, one of the few rare landscapes uh, that, or in this instance, I should say a seascape, right, Ranjit? Uh, that, uh, uh, I, I, I took. Okay, I'm going to bring you back to where I like being most uh, in India. And here we are looking at uh, old Kochi. Uh, I was uh, just uh, uh, walking around, just uh, idling, idling my way through uh, the old part of Kochi and stumbled across this place. It's, there, was a, there was a little door at the front and it's a spice market. I just put my head in. And this is what I was, uh, uh, this is what I saw. And uh, I absolutely love old buildings and the character that they present. And uh, most of these in, in the old days, uh, this would have been a, a hive of activity, I'm sure, uh, with lots and lots happening. But um, m m most of these little warehouse units, they were closed. But I, I love the decorative graffiti that was on the walls and, uh, what the, the weather had done to the, to the buildings and how beautifully they had aged. Uh, there is a certain charm in ruins and old buildings, uh, I find. And uh, I was just walking around looking to see what other opportunities there are. And uh, I ended up with, in one of the units, I ended up with this guy. And uh, he had a colleague, and this is what they did all day, made spice boxes. Uh, for a living. Uh, they would work eight hours and uh, make these boxes. So this is a, again, I went in, engaged with them, said, do you mind if I 
take a couple of pictures and uh, here's one of my favorite shots uh, of, uh, of, of this uh, gentleman uh, going about his work. You can see a little bit of motion blur in his hand. Always try and show a little bit of action in your shots. Not every shot has to be crisp. It has to convey a message. Uh, and that is what I have tried to do here. Uh, and uh, hope you like it. So I walk down and uh, here we've got uh, uh, a place where they were sorting out uh, all the ginger uh, by size and uh, uh, bagging them. And again, this was uh, taken with a view of conveying some action and uh, what, what, what goes on. And uh, very interesting, it's, it's these newspapers on the wall at the back that uh, appeal to me as well. And uh, you, you can see the remnants of some of them still here. And uh, very, 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 very interesting place. You've got uh, all the implements they have to use. And uh, my God, this was uh, hard work. And uh, they were really doing some fantastic work. Again, I always ask permission before when I go in saying, may I? I always try and ask and then take uh, uh, pictures. So I think that is one of the things. I think you'll find that most of the time, if you ask, you ask nicely. And uh, sometimes if they say, please don't, you say, okay, and thank you very much. And you just walk away, respect this, sp respect this space. You know, uh, how would you like it if somebody pointed a, a camera at you without consent? I don't think any of us would be very happy. So. That's a, I think that's a global etiquette that we must all observe. And uh, no picture of Kochi would be complete without uh, uh, the fishing nets. So I stayed here for a few days and uh, I got friendly with all these ladies. Uh, I would uh, visit them uh, in the morning and uh, they would be waiting for the fishermen uh, with their catch and then uh, these ladies would uh, buy the fish from uh, these uh, these fishermen and uh, happily go home. So you had to be here at 6, 6.30 in the morning and uh, hang around till about 7.30, 8 o'clock. And uh, uh, in my usual day, I did make a few indecent proposals to all the ladies here and uh, they would almost uh, look forward to seeing me on, on the following days and we had a great time and uh, I chatted with them and had a lovely, lovely time. And uh, so this is a picture of uh, some of my memories. So now I'm going to take you to uh, another part of Europe. This is, uh, I'd like to, uh, you guys to tell me where you think this is and please put it in the chat box if, 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 if you could. Where, where do you think we are looking at? Yeah, if you do not know, uh, you can always take a guess. Uh, yes, so oh please, yes, that is what I'd like you to do. You, you can always mention, if you don't know the city, at least you can mention the country. Yeah, so people think it's Sydney, Harbour Bridge, Hague, Cuticon, Hungary, interesting. <laughs> interesting to see Turkey, Istanbul, Sydney, Prague. <laughs> Excellent, okay. So thank you, thank you for chipping in and giving me a time to have a, a sip of uh, juice. Honestly, it's only juice I'm drinking. So this uh, was uh, on a visit to Venice. This is the industrial port of Venice. As you can see, there is uh, all the activity going on in the background. And basically the sky just lit up. This is a I, I promise you, I have not changed the white balance on this image. This is as it came out straight out of the camera. I have not done anything to this image apart from crop it and straighten it. But uh, it just lit up in, in this fashion. There was nothing there. And from nothing, I got this at sunset in, in Venice. So, you know, Venice is not just about the old buildings, the history and so on. You know, there is, there is more to a place. Uh, then just uh, meets the eye. And uh, if, if you look, uh, you can get uh, some uh, 
interesting glimpses. So just to prove that this was in Venice and I promise you it is. Yeah, I think uh, Deepak uh, Anuradha is the only person who's, who mentioned it right. That it is wow. Venice. Wow, that's awesome. You can travel with me. I'm sure you know more places than I do, Anuradha. Okay, so just to prove that it's Venice. Sorry, Mithun, you were saying? No, no, I, I said, I was just going to say that uh, Manish had a very interesting connotation. He said it is some place on planet Earth. Hey, of course, every place for <laughs> Hi, Manish, every place is on planet Earth for us. Kencho Motabhai. So just to say, just to prove to you that it was in Venice, that photograph was taken. So here we were just walking around Venice and you can see the Grand Union Canal in the background. And uh, there was a film shoot going on, some documentary, some, something was happening and I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. And I managed to see uh, these uh, fine singers uh, doing, I, I think they were just concluding what they were doing and I just managed to be there at the right time. And I said, okay, bingo, you know, I won the jackpot and uh, love this shot, this uh, above all else, uh, um, reminds me of Venice uh, more than the cliche shots that uh, you get to see of, uh, of, of Venice. As I said earlier, uh, I like people. So from uh, Venice, you obviously have uh, uh, quite a few small islands, uh, islands around Venice and um, the, the, the two main ones are uh, Murano and Burano. Murano is uh, this island we visited and uh, it is famous for its glassworks. And uh, the other island is Burano, which is very famous for its lace textiles. And uh, so went to visit like everybody does. I went to visit uh, one of the glassworks. We had a the, the, the typical tourist uh, visit. And then uh, I stayed back and got to know this guy. His name is uh, Diego Vidal. He owns this particular studio, this uh, glass studio. And uh, he was uh, obviously blowing, making some pieces on the day. And uh, I said, do you mind if I just stay back for a while and uh, take some shots uh, of, of, of you working? In? And uh, he said, not at all. And uh, I was uh, very privileged, so you can see he's uh, busy working, uh, crafting, uh, and uh, gilding uh, one of his uh, uh, glass pieces. So I, I like this image, and uh, here he is at work. Uh, so I just wanted to show you uh, an image of uh, a master craftsman at work, and uh, here is uh, a, a piece I bought from him. It, uh, it's on my mantelpiece at home and uh, occupies a place of pride and joy for me and reminds me of Diego. This was crafted by his uh, uh, fair hands. So uh, that was uh, a visit to Murano. Okay, now come back to India and this is uh, Meghalay. Uh, this is uh, Dauki River and uh, been on boating and then as, as I headed back up I saw this uh, beautiful uh, frame and uh, again uh, I thought uh, it's worth a capture and I'll share it with uh, uh, all, all my friends today. Uh, so this is uh, in, in Dauki. I, I, I love the the, 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 the deep blue uh, waters here and uh, the way the light plays and uh, all, all these uh, boats uh, mainly for tourists lined up. Uh, fortunately it wasn't busy so I managed to get uh, all these boats uh, in the frame as well and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Again this was on the way and uh, it stopped uh, for a little break uh, and uh, managed to get uh, one of the few landscape pictures I have uh, on me today. So how are we doing for time? Okay, 15 minutes. I think I'm going to wrap up in 10, 15 minutes, guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, not a problem, Deepak. You okay, can. okay, thank you, Mithun. Take your time.
Okay. So, in fact, uh, in fact Deepak, I will tell you that uh, you know I know that you've been concentrating on the presentation. People are just uh, bowled over with your storytelling. So please continue. Thank you, Nathan. Yeah, I just don't want to bore people with uh, my endless uh, chat here. So if uh, I, I shall carry on, thank you. So this was again in Meghalay, and uh, then from Meghalay, uh, headed up uh, north to Nagaland. And uh, here's uh, Nagaland personified for me. This was at uh, Hornbill Festival. And uh, how could you not uh, feel happy and cheerful when you see this uh, beautiful smile? Uh, this basically just uh, personifies uh, uh, the festival for me. Just, just this smile and uh, um, this, this, this lady's uh, costume. Uh, beautiful people, big hearts, and extremely welcoming people. And uh, I'd urge everybody to visit uh, Nagaland. Uh, in fact, I'm looking forward to visiting Nagaland very, very soon. As soon as the opportunity arises, I will be back in Nagaland. I was with you, Mithun, at this time, remember? Absolutely. So here's a, a warrior, uh, all dressed up. It had uh, quite a bit of uh, rice wine to drink. And I think Manish Bhai and Mithun were both with me at, this, at, at the time when, when we took uh, these pictures. I just wanted to show you the intensity in his face and a little bit of drama. So I converted it to monochrome to uh, not uh, detract uh, from, uh, from all, all, all the costumes he had as well. Just wanted, so it's sometimes uh, good to experiment. Uh, and now we have uh, the opportunity to do it quite easily in post. So it's, it's well worth uh, experimenting and seeing what looks good when. Uh, in fact, if I were to critique this image a little bit, I think uh, uh, his lower half below the, I, I should have uh, sort of uh, taken some of the clarity and sharpness away from it to draw, uh, draw uh, your eyes more, more to his face. But uh, again, we are all learning, lessons learned, and uh, it, uh, it, it's, it's just a continuous learning process uh, all the time, and uh, one must never stop. Okay, and uh, here uh, I'd stop for a little breather uh, to have a cup of coffee. And I saw this uh, fine young uh, Naga lady and I said, uh, please, may I, uh, will you pose for me? And uh, a little bit of be begging and pleading from me. Uh, I think uh, I'm a fairly harmless soul and I think they're all giving to me because if they don't, then uh, uh, I think I would start uh, crying. So I think they just see that and say, oh, you know, better get rid of this old guy, let him photograph and let him move on and be happy. So look at the intensity in those eyes and the catch light in her eyes. Absolutely, I love it. So I thought I'll share one of, one of these images with you. Okay, so you can see that uh, whilst uh, it's, it's a big event, the Hornbill Festival, even the locals, uh, the, people, the participants, even they have a good time. So they obviously are uh, completely immersed in what's going on in the arena. And uh, I just waited and waited and waited uh, to see if I could get uh, all these lovely ladies uh, uh, smiling and uh, obviously very bemused at something that's going on, uh, which I was not able to comprehend. So I thought, okay, I'll turn my attention to them instead. and. Uh, do what I like doing uh, most, which is uh, photographing people. So I hope you like it too. Um, I, I really like this photograph. Okay, so would uh, somebody like to tell me where we are? I would like to. Uh, not you, you know. <laughs> Come on, folks. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you would know where this place is uh, in India. You know, that's a clue for you. It's in India. Yeah. 
Yeah, a lot of uh, folks from UK have been mentioning it's in Mumbai. Yes, <laughs> interesting. Okay, so for those of you who have uh, who have said Mumbai, you are absolutely right. This is uh, Dobi Ghat and uh, the play of light coming through the side lights at the top was just phenomenal with this very, very dark and dingy smoke filled area where uh, the guy is preparing chemicals which are used to uh, uh, in, 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 in all the washing that is done at Dobi Ghat. And uh, yeah, I mean, I could have stood at the top, gone to uh, the train station, uh, Mahalakshmi, and uh, taken a couple of pictures from above. But uh, that is not what it's all about. Uh, it's about uh, getting deep in there, if that's the kind of photography you like. And uh, I love. Uh, people, documentary, people at work kind of shots. So here you can see a preparation. It's very smoke filled, uh, but uh, very, very, uh, for me, a very pleasing, pleasing shot uh, to capture of, uh, of, of my time uh, when I visited uh, Dobi Ghat with a very good friend of mine, uh, Omkar. Hello, Omkar, if you are there. Omkar is a fantastic photographer from Mumbai. And uh, uh, I had the pleasure of spending a few hours uh, with Omkar and uh, Omkar took me to Dobi Ghat to see this uh, wonderful place. So here you can see some of the prime real estate in the background. You can see the train lines. This is again on the rooftop at Dobi Ghat. Uh, the guy is having a breather uh, on the roof and uh, yeah, some of the finest, some of the most expensive real estate can be seen in the background uh, from the rooftops at uh, Dobi Ghat. And uh, uh, again, uh, this, is, this is the kind of photography I enjoy and uh, like doing. Uh, I hope you like it. Okay, so from there we come back to Humpy. Uh, closer to home for a lot of you, I believe. And uh, this is the little temple on the rock. I was here with uh, Mithun uh, last year and uh, we had a wonderful time. And uh, I thought I'll present this uh, frame uh, taken from a completely different perspective. I was actually getting ready to do some star trails work. And uh, I've got uh, one of my bodies armed with a 12 millimeters. So I thought uh, this is a a slightly different perspective on uh, on, 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 on the temple, uh, temple on the rock. And, uh, and then I converted it to, uh, again, to monochrome because I think it brings, uh, brings in, <coughs> excuse me, brings in something to the image. <coughs> excuse me. So again, you can see the stars have just come out, but uh, we were not quite blessed to be able to get star trails. I think we have got a, a sort of a star trail, but nothing like uh, Rajat showed you uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, we were basically kicked out uh, at night from this place. Uh, but before we did, uh, we got set up for the, for the star trails. Uh, we were blessed with this uh, magnificent uh, uh, sunset. And again, one of the few sort of uh, landscape shots of mine that uh, I'm sharing with you. Uh, I like this quite a lot. And uh, uh, I thought uh, it, it, it had very pleasing colors. Uh, and nature just unf unfolds its uh, beauty. We only have to look. And uh, the priest of the Temple Rock, I was talking to him. And he said uh, he takes time out every day to see the sunset and uh, see nature's glory. Uh, and he says, uh, you know, you, you are here today and you may never come again, but I sit here and I, I said, uh, you are very lucky indeed uh, to be blessed with such a beautiful view. And uh, all we have to do is look. 
So this was uh, another sunset image, and uh, uh, I have uh, sort of converted it uh, to a, a monochrome. I, I quite like uh, the lack of, uh, of, 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 of too many buildings, and I, I basically like the, the, the scarcity. The scarcity is not only in the, in the building structures, but the scarcity is also in the tree. There isn't too much drama again in the in the night sky, and uh, this is uh, virtually when it was dark. And uh, again, one of my uh, favorite images from the trip. Okay, so now uh, from Humpy, I take you to Taiwan. So I I just uh, have uh, captioned this image. Uh, Sat Sat Chale walk I, which which is just uh, walking together. I was just uh, crossing the bridge over a, over a multi lane uh, road in the middle of Taichung in Taiwan, and uh, I saw this uh, this 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 shot, and uh, I quite liked it. You know, it's it's a very built up downtown area of Taichung, and uh, it made for an interesting frame for me. So. Uh, I captured it and I thought I'll share it with you. Again, I like uh, the interplay of people in, in, in their surroundings. Okay, so I just wanted to share this picture with you. So I, I like people watching too, and uh, you have to do people watching, you have to be very mindful and you have to do it with good intentions all the time, okay? And uh, most of the time, uh, so this was, uh, we were waiting for some uh, food to arrive, uh, having ordered. Uh, and uh, most of the time you see people, they are uh, engaged in their phones, even if they're in a group. Uh, that just seems to be the norm nowadays. But there was this couple who are engaged in intense conversation. Uh, and uh, she caught my eye. I said, this is very unusual to see somebody uh, who's actually so deeply engaged. With, with the person with them rather than looking at uh, their, their mobile phone, uh, which seems to be the norm. So I thought, okay, uh, I'm going to try and capture her and then I'm going to go and show to her the purpose. So I just again, got myself all set up in a very candid manner, back button autofocus, she's focus lock ready. So all I have to do is hit the trigger button uh, when I see the right frame and uh, I was extremely pleased when I saw this, but um, I did not take my eye away from her. I said, okay, is there anything else that's going to happen? And that's what I got. So it's always good when you people watch, you continue to watch them. Having had established a frame, got what you think is good, who knows, there might be something else uh, that you might also get. And uh, here's, uh, one uh, that I got and I was very, very delighted with this shot. And uh, I went straight up to them. I shared my contact details with them and uh, I have uh, sent uh, these two photographs and her partner was very, very happy to see these uh, two very candid shots and uh, so was I. So I thought I'll share it with you. Uh, but always uh, when you do take candid shots, take them with the right intention. Okay, so, so I thought I'll share, uh, I think uh, when uh, Ranjit uh, did his landscape stuff, uh, people asked, have you taken any cityscapes? So I thought I'll share a, a couple of cityscapes of mine. I was fortunate to work in uh, Taiwan, Taichung last year for a few months. And uh, I managed to get this uh, view from uh, my apartment balcony. Uh, what you see here is a very state-of-the-art National Taichung Theater, uh, which is a, a, a truly wonderful space and a really incredible, in, incredible space that they have designed. The interior is so beautifully constructed that there isn't a single straight vertical wall. There isn't a single structurally. There isn't a single wall, and there are no pillars either. It's a, very, very beautiful. So please look it up if you are interested in, uh, I have lots and lots of uh, images, but obviously time does not permit me to share the images of the interior with you. But uh, 
there you can see the National Taichung Theater with uh, uh, the, the, the area at the front and uh, all these buildings. These are all residential buildings, uh, by the way, and uh, in, in, in Taiwan, and it seems to be the case in lots of uh, the big Chinese cities as well. This, they love illuminating their buildings and uh, it is just uh, mind-blowing when you see it. Uh, I particularly like uh, this hourglass structure on, on this building that you can see. Uh, and here's another picture again. I'm a big fan of uh, monochromes. So when you do take a shot, try and convert it to monochrome and see what the play of light looks like and uh, see how things go. And uh, this is uh, one of the shots looking down at one of the main uh, roads uh, heading out of the city. And uh, again, you can see the, the, the National Taichung Theater is very beautifully lit. <coughs> and uh, this is uh, at, at eye level. This is again taken with a, a very wide angle lens to try and get this perspective uh, or almost uh, uh, probably about six inches off the ground uh, this was taken from. And as I said, look at this beautiful hourglass structure. And uh, inside, oh, it's magnificent. Uh, please look it up if you get a chance. It's National Taichung Theater, NTT. And uh, okay, so so I said I have many shots of the inside of the building. So on one of my first visits, because I stayed there for a long time, I got to know the place. But on, I think this was actually on my very first visit. Everybody's there, you know, the central cell phone culture is uh, everywhere. Everybody's uh, looking at their phones. And I saw this uh, group of uh, young ladies and I said, I've got to get a picture here. You know, it's such a beautiful open space. And I said, uh, <laughs> They, they said, who the hell is this guy? You know, what's he doing? So I just approached them. I said, look, you are a lovely group. I want to photograph you looking at your phones from the other side. And in fact, uh, I gave my phone to this lady. She said, oh, can I have a picture? I said, I, on my phone, I said, sure, I'll share this with you. But she said, no, 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 I want it straight away. So I handed her my phone. And uh, basically, I got rewarded with this shot in the interior space. It was almost like a ready-made studio for me. Huge space, lots and lots of crowds. And uh, they are very, very lovely people in uh, Taiwan. And uh, here's uh, a fond memory of uh, my, my, my time and travel and work uh, last year in uh, Taichung. I hope you like it. So, okay. Uh, I'm almost going to wrap up now. And uh, I think uh, just overrun, I promised myself I will finish at uh, 3.45 my time. And uh, I'm going to take only two more minutes of your time. So, so what can I say? Carry on photographing. What you see here is uh, quite a historic moment actually. I was in uh, the Vatican in 2005 on the day uh, Pope John Paul II uh, passed away. So you, here you've got uh, the world's press. They've all got their uh, big primes and uh, their video cameras, and their uh, cameras. They're all pointing at the papal gallery up above. And uh, I thought this was a, a, a photograph that I need to capture. This is uh, one of my first street shots, if you like. And uh, I thought I will share it with you. This is from 2005. So sadly on the day he did pass away, I just happened to be there visiting uh, uh, the Vatican at the time on, uh, on a holiday. And uh, I thought I'll share this shot with you. I have uh, plenty of uh, shots of uh, St. Peter's and uh, the interior of St. Peter's is magnificent, but uh, this is the shot I wanted to share with you. So keep photographing. Be a Yatri, and uh, thank you, Sarah. I hope you are with us today. This was taken at the Kum Mela last year. I have uh, Badri with me in the 
ever bright uh, green t-shirt. So this was taken at uh, Coom last year after we had a snan. And uh, all I can say is uh, be a Yatri, travel, look out for the beautiful, capture the beautiful, and keep making memories. That's me. And he is not the least bit interested in me anymore because he's already got my pictures and now he's uh, eyeing up his uh, next client. So keep making memories and try and sleep under the stars sometimes and uh, look out for the joy street that uh, you will find on your travels, on your walks and uh, be nice, be happy and uh, enjoy this uh, human race we have. And I'd just like to <clears throat> leave you with a parting, uh, couple of parting words, if I may. Uh, this is uh, from one of the Nirguni bhajans of uh, Kabir, Sant Kabir. And uh, he says, uh, okay, so I'm going to say it in Hindi now, Kahet Kabir, Suno Bhai Sadho, Saath Chale Bas, Sukhi Lakadia. Uh, for all my friends who are non-Hindi speakers, uh, it means uh, that uh, Sant Kabir says that, uh, you know, what will go with you is uh, what will be used for your funeral pyre. So all I can say is uh, make happy memories, make sure they go with you uh, when you go to the other world. Um, I, I wish you, I wish everybody well and thank you for listening to me and giving me this your precious time thank you thank you very much uh, deepak uh, you know it was uh, breathtaking uh, as you can see in the chat box so i, I want uh, uh, all people who loved deepak session to please uh, give him some love just uh, you know type in so that he knows uh, how mind blowing it was yeah so uh, deepak as you see onto your chat uh, you're already having a lot of hearts and fire and love and kisses, uh, you know, everything oh. fly, flying towards you. <laughs> oh, I'm, very, I'm very touched, really am. Thank you so much, Mithun, and thank you, everybody. Yeah, really am. I was, uh, you can ask Mithun and you can ask the team at Honeycomb how uh, nervous and apprehensive I was uh, uh, earlier today about uh, how it would go. So. I really appreciate all your love. Thank you very much. And I love you all. Yeah, so, so if uh, on a lighter note, Deepak, if you call this as nervous, then I, I would prefer being nervous than being confident. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, thank so a lot, lot of you have asked, uh, is Deepak Indian? Of course, he is Indian. He is a Gujarati by heart. You know, so do not worry. There are a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, yeah. and let me tell you uh, since he mentioned about chai uh, if you ever get to travel with deepak uh, you know he will he will kill you to death uh, with tea he can have 25 times tea in a day so you know he is uh, uh, any, any bit of tea right from five star hotels down to uh, tapri is is always ready to you know uh, to take so so deepak a lot of your gujarati fans are uh, writing for you on the chat box uh -huh. thank you thank you Right. Uh, so, so you know. So, like I was telling you, uh, folks, you know. Uh, Mara, Mara, Marathi padhiyate, ha, Mithun. <laughs> so if there are any Maharashtrians, please. Kasakai. So, to, to, tumala sagar kaiya, to mala maithi. Mala yete, thoda thoda yete aata. Aata visar la mere. Right, right. Uh, but yeah, so, absolutely. I think, uh, uh, like I mentioned at the start of the uh, conversation, that uh, you are definitely going to go into the wonderful world of uh, travel you know across the world so you saw that you know he took you from london from leicester down to india to a lot of states to taiwan you know and i think uh, you know the cruise to everything so i think uh, he, he was wanting to show you 100 images you know wish we had uh, four or five hours of time we could have definitely done that but uh, in future uh, you know in coming upcoming We'll definitely get into a detailed masterclass, uh, you know, so that uh, you get to learn as well. Uh, I know that there are a lot of questions I will definitely take up with uh, Deepak. Uh, you know, do not worry. We will definitely want to, 
you know take up everything that we can and like i mentioned at the start it will definitely be a two hour plus session so i already see that uh, so please uh, you know bear bear with us uh, you know for at least uh, 35 to 40 minutes more so that uh, today is the finale i'm sure all of you would want to you know stay with us uh, you know and uh, not have any other plans uh, so please do stay uh, deepak we nearly had 350 odd people uh, i know that some people would have you know probably dropped off due to some personal work but uh, i think that's a big number and uh, it was uh, a fantastic presentation deepak thank you uh, thank you right and i i definitely want to add a couple of things uh, that uh, when deepak mentioned about especially uh, hornbill festival you know the, those uh, people in the audience um, smiling and laughing you know because if you ever attend get to attend hornbill festival you would know that there are a lot of activities a lot of uh, you know it's it's a festival of 10 full days so they have a lot of things that happens in that festival of course you know we do not understand the the naga language but uh, you can see that uh, there is you know there is humor there is seriousness there is art there's action there are a lot of things that happen like a, you know a typical um, you know theater that we go to and see a lot of uh, you know plays or you know kind of stuff so so uh, you know that was a scene where uh, there was some funny moments going on you know but it was uh, so beautiful that you know some of us decided to also capture the mood of the participants so that's how uh, you know you see so uh, like i mentioned to you storytelling uh, is uh, deepak's forte you know and uh, the relationship that he builds in uh, i'm sure he's going to talk about in the q and a because i see a lot of questions already on to those uh, how to approach what do we do uh, i'm sure he's going to uh, mention that but before we get into the q and a uh, i want to do a quick poll like we normally do so vinay if you can quickly uh, put the poll onto the screen and uh, please be ready to select will give you 60 seconds here is the poll do you print your photographs at all we want to know if you print your photographs at all and uh, you know it's perfectly fine if you don't you don't intend to or you want to know more i will let you know what you should do so please quickly uh, just select i know that deepak personally prints a lot of pictures uh, i have seen his pictures in his house uh, you know uh, so you know he will definitely would have if he had an option to mark he would have said yes i do but uh, you know uh, i have yeah so nearly 50 60% have voted so 30 more seconds quite uh, quickly please uh, exercise uh, your votes 20 seconds okay last 5 seconds interesting statistics 4 Three, two, and let me just close the poll. Okay, I'll just share the results with all of you on the screen. So uh, it's it's encouraging to see thirty percent uh, already print. Uh, to, uh, you know, nearly forty fifty percent actually do not print or uh, they uh, want to know more. So all those people who do not print or want to know more, please do reach out to our team. There is a uh, you know even. Uh, email address which is already mentioned and the numbers uh, we'll definitely be more than happy to uh, to show you some samples and get it printed for you like my mentor anand sharan used to say the joy of photography is when you print you know so a lot of people who have printed in the past will vouch in and i see deepak already uh, nodding his head so i can definitely tell you that uh, that's yes. how it is okay so uh, before we proceed to the q and a uh, we wanted to do uh, something you know as as a matter of uh, gratitude uh, but yeah i mean i i'm, I'm really sorry i i forgot one thing deepak uh, i i wanted to mention that uh, all those people who have joined in for the session who are registered with us and have joined in for the session will get a, a set of uh, one page pdf document as a bonus uh, from deepak who has curated the links himself so he's uh, given us some links that you can follow that he follows that he follows some youtube links and some uh, url so definitely that will come uh, along with the recording of this session which is a youtube link and uh, you know the other feedback form and other things that will come so please watch out for that by early next week do not worry everything will come to you so deepak has uh, uh, put in those links to help all those aspiring photographers also to follow certain people's work is given i think a lot of instagram handles to follow you know so you should definitely you know have a look at it that will help you uh, for sure okay so before we uh, proceed uh, uh, deepak uh, you know uh, uh, vinay if you can 
quickly put in the video. We wanted uh, to, to thank all of you. Hi, good morning. I'm Dr. Sinji Mangoli, a pediatrician and a wildlife enthusiast. Firstly, I would like to say a big thanks to Honeycomb Creative Support and Photo Stock, the organizers of the Reel of Wonders, the webinar series on different journals of photography as a part of the International Photography Week 2020 celebrations. In the midst of a dull and dry pandemic, this was like an oasis. Such a brilliant event would not happen without the time, dedication and support of NAFU. Shri Kumar and everyone involved. A platform such as this develops the confidence needed for any creative journey. Art is everywhere manifesting itself in various forms. It is a great opportunity for photographers to showcase a select portion of their practice and discover what others are creating. I must say it was an honor to be invited to speak here on wildlife photography. Thank you so much. The week of this program was nothing less than a life experience. I would like to propose a special vote of thanks to the Mercurial Mithun Prabhu for kindly hosting these webinars and taking utmost pains to see the presentations were successful from all angles. I would like to take a moment to thank a group of people, my extended family, who I feel simply haven't been thanked enough. Jaji, Sanisha, Shweta, Akhil, Bijit, Harish, Sanjeevan, Vinay and of course, late Adit. We could not have done any of this without you all buddies. Webinars are of no use without participants. It was well supported by the community both here and beyond. Art of photography functions as a catalyst bringing people together and forming no new modes of connection. Today, I would like to thank everyone, every single learned participant for attending the webinar and encouraging us. Boosting artists in such a manner deserves to be applauded. Art of photography is about putting forward ideas, memories, musings, and many like me will continue to be a part of that. Thank you, one and all. Thank you so much. My sincere thanks to everyone who joined Landscape Photography webinar. I thoroughly enjoyed sharing my experience and hope you found it useful as well. My heartfelt gratitude for all the love and appreciation I received for my humble work. Thank you so much. Hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining my session and making it such a grand success. All the photographers who actually were a part of this are uh, truly inspiring and I learned a lot from the others who were on the panel. It was a little weird and I didn't know how this would work uh, on a virtual platform. But all of you who actually tuned in made it a grand success and the response has been fabulous. Thank you for a stop. Thank you Honeycomb and hope we can do the, such events in a larger gathering and this this, this pandemic leaves us so that we can all meet and enjoy such a session in person. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed my presentation on Salon participation. I thank you all of you who have witnessed the show and learned whatever you can. On this occasion, I would like to thank the staff of Honeycomb as well as Mr. Mithun Prabhu on this occasion. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone for attending the webinar organized by Honeycomb Creative Support. I wish to see you again in our upcoming webinar. Happy shooting and thanks again. Hi everyone. It was my tremendous pleasure to share with you my macro photographic journey. Your enthusiasm and uh, active participation motivated me to give my best for them. Thank you very much. Hello everyone. Just uh, wanted to say a big thank you from uh, myself, Deepak Samani, uh, for joining us for this series of webinars hosted by Honeycomb Creative. We look forward to seeing you in the future. Take care. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Thank you for participating in the Reels of Wonders webinar series. We had an overwhelming response and it was possible only because of your presence. It has been a learning session for all of us about different genres of photography from eminent speakers except in their own field. We will be coming up with more such webinars. See you soon. Speakers, thank you for sharing your experience and attendees, thank you for your participation. Hi, the experience I gained by coordinating between participants and my teammates was remarkable. Team spirit and enthusiasm helped us gain more confidence and knowledge to improve ourselves to give the best in the forthcoming webinars. 
it indeed was a huge success at the end and thank you all for being part of this journey hi i am harish i'm also working alongside agil in designing the creatives for social media and it was overall amazing and unique experience thank you thank you hanikom for giving me this wonderful opportunity it indeed was a great experience for me and i enjoyed every bit of it and thank you all for being a part of the webinars thank you for the great experience hi hi am ajay vijay i worked on the creative for the webinar uh, it indeed was a new uh, and exciting experience for the webinar hello everyone from the bottom of my heart i want to thank each one of you who attended our webinars that we conducted as part of the international photography week 2020 you all showed so much of love that we are overwhelmed with the feedback thank you again on behalf of speakers and the anicom team until we meet soon for the next ones take care and be safe thank you good evening all thank you so much for attending all our webinars stay tuned there are more things uh, on the way thank you thank you very much uh, everyone uh, just had uh, tears uh, rolling down my eyes uh, you know because uh, uh, we all know that uh, it's it's going to end today but we just wanted uh, you know all the speakers uh, to personally thank you uh, can i can i request all the speakers who are there on the on the call right now if you can just switch on the video so that those who have missed seeing you before can actually see you uh, as well again so if uh, the entire team uh, including all the speakers if you can quickly uh come on to the screen great uh, thank you very much uh, please uh, we know there are a lot of uh, them waiting to see you in one frame dr sanjeev shri kumar everybody it will take some time uh, sorry about that uh, because everybody is uh, here he comes uh, satish sir <laughs> nice to see you great uh, dr sanjeev and uh, amit looks like uh, they were so much engrossed in the video that they forgot to switch on the videos <laughs> okay so so you know this is uh, this is the entire set of uh, people uh, i know uh, bhushan is missing because uh, bhushan uh, stepped into the ipl straight uh, and uh, the video that you saw was actually from mumbai so he was already with the team in mumbai but he still found time to uh, you know, give us the video dr sanjeev you are missing my we can hear you Yes. Yes. You, we can't miss you, Dr. Sanjeev. You had the longest uh, speech for us. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you so Dr. much. Um, Wonderful. Okay, so so ladies and gentlemen, th this is this is everybody that you saw. Uh, for those who missed, uh, you know, please, uh, you know, we wanted to quickly have everybody onto the screen. We we know that uh, all of us, uh, you know, put in so much of hard work. But I think more than that, it is all of you who have spent your personal time. all seven days uh, to join us uh, especially after work and uh, two two days of the weekend so i think like i said uh, you know it has been a fantastic uh, experience feedback a yeah, lot of uh, lot of areas to uh, to look at and, uh, and, and 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 this is technology so you know you always find uh, you know something going wrong <laughs> but, but but i think uh, largely if we Uh, largely if we see uh, everything was seamless uh, we we are really sorry just in case uh, if anything went wrong because of us you know uh, we have we have taken the feedbacks we'll de definitely ensure that uh, next time when we uh, bring in we will incorporate those uh, this is a mammoth effort by itself as you would have seen you know uh, you know first and foremost uh, everybody preparing the content then you know putting it together creatives to you know to videos to everything you know sometimes at very very short notice uh, you know sometimes uh, a lot of preparation time uh, people uh, speakers like deepak and rajat and uh, amit uh, would have got a, a better time frame because uh, they were towards the end but you know a lot of them like dr sanjeev you know, you know satish sir to bhushan to uh, ranjit 
absolutely did not have much of time you know so you know if if you if you loud it i think uh, you know we do rock and uh, you know we we all uh, can make it happen so this is how i think uh, the team work works so i just wanted to say thank you on behalf of uh, myself uh, to entire honeycomb team entire set of speakers and all of you attendees you know absolutely fantastic thank you very much uh, for uh, for being with us thank you okay so um, thank you very much uh, let's uh, dive in uh, deepak uh, straight into the questions thank you okay thank you wonderful and Deep uh, deepak bol video on the bol aaja i'm sorry uh, uh so uh, uh deepak uh, we loved uh, the photo that you had uh, behind uh, in your behind your couch uh, the one that you showed in the i mean the where we had the thank you video so i think uh, uh, that's the level of prints that i was talking about as well so it was yes. absolutely fantastic and some of the pictures were absolutely from the same uh, trips and uh, images that you just shown okay so uh, driving diving into uh, the question straight uh, a lot of them wanted to know what is the gear that you use because you did not uh, i know you mentioned it uh, while you were talking but if you can explain it out you know what is the gear that you use okay so i basically use a fuji system at the moment uh, i was a canon shooter for many many years but now i use fuji x i have two xt2s which are extremely hard wearing weather sealed uh, um cameras and uh, then i will carry uh, lenses to suit uh, basically a 10 to 24 uh 18 to 135 but it really depends on uh, what i'm doing uh and i carry a tripod with me that's it that, that's about it so that that's your gear as simple as you can yeah. so ev everything you've seen today has been taken on a 18 to 30 18 to 135 mm lens on a fuji xt2 and a 10 to 24 or a 12 mm prime that's it wonderful so so you know deepak is one example of you know going light absolutely not carrying too many gears you know don't get bogged, bogged down about you know i want this lens i want a 2.8 i want a 3.5 you know all that stuff so uh, he's an he's a fuji man i know uh, and uh, he's all i'm going to say mitra is uh, I strongly urge all my friends to focus on the subject. The best gear is the gear you bought in your hands and use it, learn to use it and be happy with it and be creative. Sometimes things don't work. It's okay. Think of a different perspective, try something new. You know, there are rules, but uh, breach them. Right. Uh, at this point i also want to uh, mention a lot of you who were there in amit session yesterday on the macro photography i know that you had questions on the macro lenses for your mobile phones if you remember there were a lot of questions uh, that uh, amit was asked so amit and i uh, sat together to put that information i'm just going to uh, you know put it on to the chat box uh, so there is a gentleman by name somnath kumbar uh, his number is mentioned there uh, he he has a lot of uh, beautiful macro lenses uh, you know please do connect up with him uh, his facebook id i have already mentioned and uh, he ships across uh, to india uh, so all those of you who wanted uh, you know this is uh, th these are the numbers and you can definitely reach out to them if you, if you are interested in the macro lenses okay uh, next question deepak uh, uh, and and in fact th th this is i think the most trending question that uh, you know do you take permission of your subject if yes is it is it required if yes then how do you approach what, what is the what is the standard thing that you do the protocol that you use okay so in the examples of people i showed you uh, i would say 90% of those images were taken with permission so the subjects were fully aware uh, in certain cases where you can see a situation evolving and you want to take a candid shot you do and uh, if it transpires after you take on the shots that you know the subjects are approachable then you can go and show it to them like uh, that uh, lady i showed you in taiwan uh, i took those two shots without her knowledge and then uh, i approached her saying look i have done this and she was actually very pleased uh, but always respect uh, people when you want to take a 
or picture of a person, as I said uh, during my talk, is uh, uh, go and approach them with a nice smile and always make sure that uh, your intentions are honorable and noble. You know, there should be no voyeurism uh, in uh, image making of any sort at all. You must uh, take images with a pure heart. I can't, uh, I, I can't uh, say any more. And uh, uh, if, if you're nice and you tell them, um, I, I, I think my experience is they will say yes most of the time. When they say no, respect their space. You know, after all, you are invading on their privacy. So please, please, please respect, uh, respect them. Right, and I think it is a very uh, critical component for photographers, you know, because sometimes we, in the, in the run up to taking the photographs, uh, you know, we tend to forget the, the privacy part, the etiquettes part. So I think uh, what is very critical is uh, absolutely to seek permission to strike conversation. And I know that a lot of you have asked, uh, what, what if you do not know the local language? You know, of course, you, you go with a local person so that, you know, he, he or she does the uh, bit of translation for you. And that's how, uh, you know, it works. So, uh, so yeah, th that, that's uh, how uh, it is. And um, uh, Ajay, thank you very much uh, for your appreciation. Ajay Deepak is mentioning that seven days, seven wonders. He's waiting for the eighth wonder very soon. You know, thanks for all speakers, you know. So, wish we could continue, you know, every day. But, uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's how it is. A lot of people have invited you to Calcutta, uh, Deepak, to, you know, because they are, Calcutta has the, the best of the subjects in India in terms of street and festivals and all that stuff. So, oh, tell me about it. I'm so looking forward to uh, going to Kolkata. Yes, absolutely. That's uh, right up there and uh, really, really looking forward to visiting Kolkata soon. Uh, it is really the city of dreams and uh, where I would love to most. And, uh, I can see somebody is also mentioning Odisha here, and absolutely, I would love to visit uh, Odisha. I can see Sir Deva Sahu. Thank you very much for your invitation. Yeah, I think I will uh, take it up. By the way, yeah, I think we will make you the uh, brand ambassador of uh, India. You know the ah. uh, so you can travel and you can promote as well. That that ah. will help uh, tourism yeah. as well. But there is there is no place like India in the world, honestly. For for me. There is only one place in the world to photograph, and that is India. I'm obviously very biased about uh, my approach, and I think uh, in the conversation we had Mithun uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I can say with my hand on my heart that uh, I have spent every dollar of my travel in India for the last eight years. Every dollar. Uh, I don't travel anywhere else to photograph, or for that matter, to travel because what don't we have in India? It's everything. Right. A lot of people want to know what editing software do you use and any recommendations? Okay, um, very simple. I use uh, Lightroom and uh, I use uh, Capture One. Uh, and uh, I really like to get it right uh, in the camera. Uh, I would rather spend my time behind a lens than in front of a monitor. Right. Anand, Anand is mentioning that uh, he himself is a travel photographer, but he hesitates uh, reaching out to people and, uh, you know, and especially those who have trust issues. Uh, so, so any, any recommendations for introverts like him? Uh, go out there as long as your intentions are pure and uh, go out there, smile big, don't look too intimidating. And when you start out, don't go out with your 70 to 200 and uh, don't try and show off your gear. I'll just give you a little example. This is all you need. Deepak, it looks as if you're dived into the ice. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so here I have my Fuji, one of my Fuji street cameras that I carry with me. This is just a very simple X100 and it's a 23 millimeter lens. So it's not intimidating, you see. If you go out there and stick a big, a big camera, a big DSLR with a big lens on it in, into somebody's face, they are not going to uh, be very happy with you. You know, you are invading their private space. Uh, and I think it's natural, you know, 
let uh, people do that. Uh, so try and keep keep low profile and uh, try and uh, smile. My, 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 only, my only answer is, I mean, I have been to places where I don't speak a word of the language. I'm not conversant in uh, many European languages. I speak a little bit of everything, but uh, you know, when I went to Taiwan, or if I go to China or I go to Russia uh, from work, then all you have to do is smile. You know, a smile is, the, is, 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 is a common language. And uh, I think if you smile and your intentions are good, they will come through and people will allow you to photograph them. I promise you, try it. Absolutely. Um, uh, so, so all those uh, people who asked the, uh, uh, the editing software to be repeated, uh, Ranjit has just mentioned it for you. It's Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom and Capture One for Fuji. Yes, I use Capture One now, uh, especially for my Fuji work, but it's, it's, it's only a piece of software. Don't get too hung up on it. Right. The, I do very little work, post-processing work on my images, crop, straighten, if I want to convert to black and white, I'll do that occasionally, but really uh, the fun is in taking the pictures, not sitting for endless hours in front of a monitor at home. That's no fun. Right. Uh, there, there's a question on your sunset uh, seascape picture that you, sh uh, that you showed. Uh, any reason uh, why was it uh, the tilted horizon? I'm sorry, I did not understand. Uh, the sunset uh, seascape picture that you had showed where there was a cruise ship down. The question was, why was the horizon tilted? Okay, pure artistic license. It's how I wanted to compose it. Uh, I, I do not see any merit that that picture, the way I, I captured it diagonally, I got more in the frame and more interest in the frame. So it was purely my interpretation. Uh, uh, I, I, I saw no point in just uh, straightening it out. Right. I think this was answered already, Akshita, that uh, how do you de deal with local people in India, uh, language barriers? Uh, you do go with local guides or local people uh, from the place if you can. Otherwise, you know, anybody who knows so that uh, there is a bit of translation. And uh, irrespective of the language around the world, I can tell you that uh, if you are humble, if you are uh, grounded, uh, you know, and if you make this, uh, the people comfortable, you know, by your body language, you can easily, uh, you know, make them converse. It doesn't really need to know because it is imp virtually impossible as a travel photographer for you to know every language or every dialect in, in the country or around the world. You know, so that's that's how it uh, works. And and the, sorry, Deepak, I'm, I'm also answering this on your behalf sure. because I'm a tra tra travel photographer as well along with you. you know, so Please. I know how it works. Uh, so, so uh, I, I knew that this question will come in. I know uh, it was not uh, mentioned as part of your presentation, but uh, mm -hmm. the question is on, you know, how to, how to write, how to do blogging, how to write, you know, stories, how to write uh, the experiences that you encounter during travel, any tips? Okay, so you see, you've got uh, amazing bloggers out there on, uh, on, on, on the web. Uh, I really, uh, do not uh, write blogs. I want my pictures to tell my story. And I'm, I'm not trying to be arrogant or anything here. I really believe that uh, blogging and writing is an art form which uh, I don't possess. Uh, and I'm just a simple guy who wants to get on with life and uh, uh, make memories and uh, have fun really. Right, and I think uh, it's a very important uh, statement that Deepak made that make memories, uh, you know, because the uh, I, I can I can vouch for that uh, fact, you know, because uh, since I did my uh, two solo uh, exhibitions last year, a lot of people came to my exhibition and said, you know what, uh, in 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 the set of sixty frames that you displayed, there were so many uh, nostalgic memories you took me th took me through, you know, you you took me to Sikkim, you took me to US, you took me to London, you took me to X, X, Y, Z, you know, so because people relate, it's easy to relate for people when they see pictures. That's why, you know, they, they say that uh, picture is uh, better than, you know, thousand words. So, you know, so, but yes, I mean, to, to the point, if, if you cannot, uh, if you do not have the flair of writing in you, of course, you, you should not, you know, but 
to specifically answer this question uh, if you can write and if you can express your emotions uh, you know whether it is a story or whether it's a place geographical historical importance you should definitely write uh, i would definitely second that uh, opinion uh, in fact i write a lot on facebook i know that uh, a lot of people do not have time these days to go through a lot of written content but to me when i write I, it makes me feel happy so if you if you follow me on facebook you will see that every day i put a picture and i write I, it's easy for me to just put a picture and you know just move on you know but i think i personally think i should uh, you know voice out my thoughts so if you can do blocking we blocking videos you know whatever it is you should definitely do but you know be sure that you can do it you know because content is today king but at the same time it has to be an engaging story as well so i think uh, that's what i feel okay uh, i know that a lot of you had this questions on uh, participation in exhibitions and salons will this be categorized i think uh, if you missed satish sir's session uh, you know you can definitely look at the recordings because he did articulate which all pictures can be uh, under travel sections and other uh, areas so do not uh, worry please look at that uh, this thing but to specifically answer some of you asked can portrait go into x or y um, you know sections it all depends uh, it can be in an if it's a color it can go in open color it can if it's a monochrome it can go in open mono if it's a travel picture like deepak showed you know it definitely qualifies for uh, travel but like satish sir mentioned travel has it has uh, to have no manipulations no heavy editing or you know no things that uh, change the alter of the uh, the picture and of course if you are Uh, ready they will ask you for raw files you need to provide so it all depends uh, there is no uh, straight answer but all that i can tell you is that travel and street go hand in hand so you know uh, a street picture can also become a travel as long as it conveys the the place uh, importance and significance that's that's uh, uh, that's what i would like to say uh, that there was a question also deepak on how landscape photography is different from travel of course it is different you know so if you would have seen uh, i don't know if you want to answer deepak on that uh, okay so i think you can say that landscape is part of travel photography but uh, essentially when when you show a landscape as a part of your travel genre if you wish to and there are many many people who travel exclusively for landscape uh, work only and uh, yeah i mean there are masters in that craft uh, i personally uh, am okay at uh, landscape work i'm not uh, terribly good i like people uh i like people i like uh, scenes and i like to contextualize uh, the, the 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 people environment thing so you will always find that if i have a landscape photograph associated with that will be a human story of some sort in my images uh but absolutely uh, uh landscape is a very big part of travel uh and uh, there are people who do it really really well right there is a question on how do you convert so you you showed a lot of monochrome images so how do you decide when to convert to monochrome and what do you use to convert i think okay the i'll answer the the, the second question uh, uh i just use software so i photograph in raw everything is shot in raw and uh, then uh, you have complete freedom to either have it in uh, monochrome or in color or or any 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 grades thereof so that's the that's the easy part when it comes to uh when do how do i decide when do i decide i think that comes with uh, lots and lots of doing it and uh, i think a lot of people say that uh, if your picture is not that great then uh, convert it into monochrome and uh, it will look better well that's not uh, that's not how i look at it and i set out i almost see an image in monochrome and it's just a gut feel that comes to you over time uh, I, 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 i'm sorry but i can't explain it in any other way i can just see an image and i believe that when i see an image it looks good in in black and white and uh, you will see a very large percentage of uh, what's out there in social media on my pages uh, is in monochrome method that's right and uh, i think uh, like we have constantly maintained uh, as long as you have a story anything looks good uh, you know and uh, and you convey the emotions i think uh, you are done so you are game for uh, anything that looks good 
a uh, lot of people wanted to know how do you plan for your trips uh, because you know it requires a lot of time organization and uh, money yes so uh, i think as you can see i'm an old boy now and uh, i'm sort of uh, stepping back from my work life and uh, i basically now am in a reasonably fortunate position to plan my work life around my trips and uh, yes there is a lot of planning involved but uh, as they say, uh, fail to plan and plan to fail. So uh, get, get all the I's dotted and the T's crossed before you set out and uh, make sure uh, you, you, you've covered all the aspects but, and mentally prepare yourself. I mean, I have uh, friends who just uh, travel. They're not photography friends but they will want to go and they will go and have a look at the room in a hotel and say, you know, how many square feet there is. For me, none of that is relevant. As long as there's a clean bed and somewhere, a bit of shelter, I'm happy. But uh, it's, it's getting yourself in that frame of mind and saying, what, what is it you're going to do when you're out here? And sometimes you, you have no idea. It's a new experience. And, uh, going out go out and have new experiences that is very important uh, so yeah planning is essential uh, and uh, you just uh, have to save a little bit of money uh, every now and then and plan your trips right ajay wanted to know which glacier photo that you have in the virtual background which one is this oh this uh, this is uh, at uh, pangong pangong so in Ladakh. Yeah, so he thought it was an Alaska picture, uh, but it is no, not. No, I, 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 have, I have been to Alaska too. I have uh, some magnificent uh, glacier pictures in Alaska as well, but uh, uh, there is only so much uh, I can share with you. And uh, I thought it was more interesting. I mean, yeah, yeah, I have got, I have, I have walked on glaciers as well, and I have been to Alaska as well, and uh, seen glaciers from the sea as well. Right. I think uh, there are a lot of recommendations for from people that you should come to Tamil Nadu too. You know, so please. Oh, know I would. Oh, yeah. I, absolutely. I would love to come to Tamil Nadu. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Well, I would like to go anywhere in India. Uh, is there anybody from uh, uh, Orcha? Is that how you say it, Mithun? Right. Is there anybody in the listening from in and around Orcha? I'd like to make contact with you right uh, on the on the question that uh, that you had answered about uh, getting uh, close to people to speak to them what what happens if the people get angry oh, people never get angry they some, sometimes uh, if, if they're in a bad mood they're working especially if they're working people you know like street sellers or anybody then uh, then you, you, you must be mindful that you don't approach them. And, you know, at the end of the day, they are earning a livelihood. You are there uh, in a recreational capacity. So please refrain from disturbing them. Uh, that is when they will get angry, because if you intrude on uh, their workflow, their livelihood, then surely I would do as well if you disturb me during my, my working time. So just just uh, look look around and some people i think you can tell if they're going to be approachable or not uh, uh, so far i have not experienced uh, anything too intense from anybody just respect step back and say thank you and smile and walk away right i think an associated question also was uh, especially in europe uh, sometimes uh, people uh, do not uh, are not very cooperative uh, and uh, you know, people travel as tourists. They 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 try to take photographs, but uh, you know, uh, they they're not uh, too happy. So, I mean, this is more of an experience sharing with you. Uh, sure, sure, sure. So um, I think answer is same. Uh, again, I would just say, you know, be mindful. Uh, you know, respect their space and ask them. You know, I'd like to do this. Can I? And. Uh, most of the time you will find they will. I have various examples of uh, street photography I have done in Europe as well. It's not an issue, but um, 
you just ask, be nice and ask. You know, right. don't do this, hold this in their face and then ask. Keep it down and then ask and say, may I, you know, can I, can I, I'd like to take a picture of you because you are interesting, you look interesting. And I think then hold your camera up. Right, and I, I would uh, strongly recommend also in addition to what Deepak said is uh, once you're done with the picture, please do show it to them because a lot of them are happy. And if you promise them that you will definitely uh, ship it out to them, a print, please do keep your promise because, you know, a lot of people do tell it and then, you know, just walk off and they forget about them. So, you know, so please don't do that. If, if, you, if you really want to uh, share the picture in a print format, you take their address, they, they do expect you to get back. So please do keep up your promise. Otherwise, do not promise. That's what I would say. So I can see on the chat, Mithun, a gentleman by the name of Shirish Kumar Patel. He's saying, welcome to Kutch. Kutch nahi dekha to kuch nahi dekha. And I agree with him. So I'm going to be arriving on your doorstep very soon, Shirish Bhai. Right, and I'm going to get uh, Rajat and Rajiv join also because uh, we will do Astro in LRK and uh, you know also travel along with Dr. Sanjeev who can help us do some flamingos and you know all those things uh, you know and the white sand so, you know it's it's, uh, it's on the wish list. Absolutely. <laughs> Right, and all, all those people who did not understand, uh, you know, what he mentioned, he mentioned all the food items. And like I said, you don't need to know the language. You just need to, you know, uh, you know patiently hear. You will definitely, you know, understand uh, what is it about. Great. Uh, I will not take a lot of time. I know that uh, we have already uh, overshot, uh, you know, by the two hours that I had promised. So I'll probably take five more questions. And uh, for all those uh, few questions that we could not answer, uh, we'll definitely uh, get Deepak to answer that for you and uh, reach out to you. Uh, there is a question on, uh, do you use flash uh, photography at all when you uh, take the subjects, especially on the streets and other? Do you use flash? Uh, no, I, I don't. I do carry a small flash with me, but uh, most of the time, street photography, I think, uh, does not involve, unless you're going to do some fantastic portrait and you want to isolate the subject, uh, from the background and uh, you know really give it prominence but uh, yeah my, my, my street photography is meant to be raw and ready I just want to convey the essence of the people uh, so I do carry it but uh, very infrequently used right uh, Anant also wanted to know do you have you encountered any bad uh, you know situations uh, during a travel like cheats or mafia or any kind of people during your experience of traveling? Uh, well, I, 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 I'm pleased to say I haven't. Okay. Not yet. Great. Uh, yes, uh, Pankaj, uh, portrait, uh, street and landscape uh, sometimes uh, is overlapped uh, depending on the, you know, on the, uh, on the subject that you shoot. So yes, it can get overlapped for sure. Uh, I think, uh, I, I, I don't know which picture I'll be talking about here, but there's a question on, uh, we noticed the presence of harsh light in one of your portrait images. So is there any specific time of the day when it was relatively good for travel photography when outdoors? Uh, I, I would assume it is the lady, you know, uh, picture that you had shown. Uh, um, I don't know. Yeah, she was sat in, uh, you know, there was a lot of sunlight there. She was sat in the sun. And uh, I wanted to present it as uh, real as so uh, real as possible. I could have uh, done what I was required in edit, but as I say, I want my I want my presentation to be raw and ready. I'm 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 doing it uh, to be as real as possible. Right. Uh, how about uh, when you take candid shots like you had those ladies and uh, other uh, candid shots that you took in the restaurant mm -hmm. and somebody talking mm -hmm. to their friend? So, so uh, we know that uh, you can sit at a distance and observe, but uh, uh, any other better way of uh, doing this? Uh, so, okay, so we, we'll talk about that one particular shot where 
the guy is looking out, uh, staring out of the window and the girl is drinking her juice. So that I'd, I'd made my mind up. I was not going to, obviously I cannot ask because asking just ruins that emotion in that subject. You know, it's, it's part of the observing. So what, what I did is my camera was already set up on the table. I'm not holding the camera in my hand. It is there on the table next to my drink. As I said earlier, I'd got her focus locked. I'd focused on her and I'd got her focus locked with back button autofocus. And if people don't know what that is, they can look it up on Google. And then, uh, so the camera is absolutely ready. Everything's ready to go. All I have to do is keep observing her and keep hitting the trigger on my camera. And don't bother looking at it because you know, with experience, if you've set it up correct, the framing is right, you can see it on the screen on the back of the camera. And uh, uh, that's, that's how you do that one. That was an instance where I did not share the image afterwards. I did not see it appropriate to share that image uh, with that couple. But as I say, 90% plus of my images are actually shared with the subjects I photograph. And I will go home, I will take time, I will process them, I will get them right, and then I will email them out to them. Absolutely. Last uh, two With questions. a big thank you. You must do it. You, you owe it to them. The fact that they allowed you to invade their privacy, you owe it to them um, as a mark of respect and a sense of morality as well. Right. And like, I, like I mentioned, for all those people who have said that they want to learn, they want to know more, exifs all that you know we'll, we'll definitely have a, a detailed class uh, coming soon so that uh, we can uh, dive in into more of those details so please stay tuned with the live shots uh, facebook group that we have and we'll definitely let you know when we do that uh, last two questions uh, deepak we don't want to hold you for any more longer uh, i know that we can go on you know a whole night you know because uh, you know this is such an interesting subject but uh, you know, uh, since it's uh, closer to evening for you, I uh, just don't want to take any more time. Just last two questions. Uh, any difference in traveling alone or with friends? What do you prefer? Uh, I prefer traveling with friends, but I'm very happy to travel alone as well. And if you follow the hashtag Akela Musafir on any social media, so if you Google, if you if you Google, if you go on any social media platform and you look at uh, the hashtag Mithun Tum type kar do na yaar akela musafir mere liye right right it's anyway uh, you put akela and you'll get it you don't need to <laughs> yeah yeah hashtag so if you hashtag akela musafir uh, you will find that 90% of what's out there on social media with that hashtag is my work uh, I, 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 I love people and I love traveling with people, but I'm equally comfortable traveling alone as well. Right. And I think uh, uh, if you honestly ask me uh, in travel, when you travel together, uh, you know, not only it adds to a lot of experience sharing, uh, you know, during on the field, but off the field, you have a lot of fun. And that's what we do. And that's how we have done it for the last four to five years. Uh, you know, including Deepak and a lot of people who are there Absolutely. on the attendee right now, Manish to uh, uh, Ranji to a lot of uh, folks, you know, that's, that's how you do it because, you know, you build relationship, especially if you do not know each other, you know, it's a great way to network and share experiences, personal, professional, photography related, you know, and I, I personally enjoy it a lot, you know, uh, but yeah, I mean, Deepak is right that if you don't get anybody, you should travel solo, you know, so there's no doubt about it. And, uh, uh, last question, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Deepak. Uh, what would you prefer? Click places, culture, or people? What is your personal preference in any priority if you have? Okay, so for me, people comes first. I think hopefully that's uh, evident from uh, the images I've shown you. Then I like uh, heritage, which India has a lot to offer, both in terms of uh, 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 living heritage as well as uh, architecture and uh, then landscapes. I think I'm a very poor landscape photographer. I don't uh, agree to that, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure Ranjit also doesn't agree to that. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, pe people people should definitely come first, uh, you know, because people 
defines travel and uh, landscapes of course uh, if you are a pure play landscape photographer uh, but again uh, if you have followed ranjit's work and if you had been to ranjit's presentation you would have seen that uh, he puts in those tiny human elements uh, into the landscape which of course alters the complete uh, you know the look of the image so i think that also is a very creative way of doing it so it all depends there's no one straight answer but uh, yeah that's how it works okay so uh, i think uh, nafel uh, do you want to give uh, some parting words before we close the session shrikumar nafel yeah uh, i think we'll dedicate to adit and yeah we can just dedicate this to adit i will put his visual on the screen and then we can have a national anthem in close Uh, you can just uh, talk about it ma the right uh, so all those uh, who who missed out on dr sanjeev's uh, session we had mentioned that uh, adit aziz uh, was our video editor a young boy of only 22 years old who left uh, for heavenly about uh, just last week uh, we, most of us or all of us in anikom were absolutely shattered so we had uh, decided to dedicate the entire ipw 2020 the international photography week uh, to this young chap you know who so most of the videos that you saw uh, until uh, last week was all done by him and as all of us know video plays a very very important role uh, in in today's uh, world you know because video and photos are what people identify with uh, rather than a lot of text so he was the one uh we did dedicate uh, two minutes uh, of uh, silence for him uh, for that uh, if if you look onto the screen the 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 face the the enigma that he had but i think uh, god had uh, different plans for him we we do wish uh, that wherever he is uh, he is listening to us he his smiling face uh, does encourage a lot of uh, uh, folks at honeycomb to keep working in fact uh, until his last day he was still working on our videos it is very difficult for a lot of us to even believe that he is no more but uh, we definitely uh, hope that he comes back uh, in a better form in the next life and uh, we wanted to dedicate uh, all this ipw to to him send it to you champ yeah i will play the national anthem yeah we would request you to please stand up uh, for the national anthem Uh, thank you very much uh, i i think uh, that uh, what you just saw uh, defines uh, the national integration for uh, for honeycomb for all of us and all of uh, india like deepak mentioned uh, you know so that's that's india that's all of us and uh, like i said uh, i just wanted to quickly show you you know what we started with which is uh, this picture of uh, dr sanjeev which is the which is the elephant uh, you know the we started with the ganesha uh, invo invocation if you remember on day 1 and we ended up uh, on on with uh, deepak 
you know with his closing shot so like in photography we always mention that uh, you know the opening shot and the closing shot matters a lot so i just wanted to tell you that uh, you know we all will miss you uh, but uh, do not worry we will come back soon with many more and uh, you should uh, be having lot more content lot more master classes a lot more uh, inspirational uh, sessions that will help uh, all of us uh, learn so uh, shri kumar you want to say something uh, uh yes satan in fact i just uh, wanted to say a few words uh, to all the people i would like to thank uh, deepak his uh, energy and liveliness has his own way of wooing people through his wonderful knowledge sharing session on travel photography thank you so much uh, deepak and uh, i would like to i mean i would without uh, actually this webinars wouldn't have happened without our uh, director mr nopul showing us the way and trusting us with this uh, new experiment uh, kudos to the entire team mithun for moderating the session in such a beautiful manner vinay jorgi mahashweta sanisha akil sarish harish and our late uh, adit for working vigilantly and extensively our hard work has paid off finally and uh, made this into a phenomenal success uh, thank you all the participants um, you 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 have made this a grand success thank you thank you absolutely uh, and i think i uh, deepak uh, we should have a round of applause uh, for you and all the speakers and all the participants let's uh, let's give a you know clap uh, you know for, for for the wonderful show thank you very much thank you everyone really really and uh, you know i'm sat here three and a half thousand miles away and uh, i'm very happy to share it with uh, my indian family wonderful yeah and uh, like i said uh, i i had promised you that the finale is going to be uh, extra veganza bonanza so you know that's why we have to take uh, one hour of your time extra i hope uh, uh, you know you did not mind the uh, you know on a saturday evening or a late uh, late evening for people in india so thank you very much and uh, until we see you again please stay safe uh, please do travel please do travel with any one of us please do travel with your friends in fact and do, try not to go solo you know because uh, friendship uh, is what at the end of the day is a memorable memorable experience so uh, keep clicking and uh, stay with us thank you bye bye Thank you good night thank you thank Bye. you all yeah good thank you all thank you thank Bye. you all good night good night